Happy Little Games. Hey everybody, just a quick reminder that if you enjoy this content or any of my videos, be sure and leave a like. It helps support the channel and allows my videos to move it on up with YouTube's algorithm. Thanks again. People have been discovering unusual pairings for a long, long time. Usually, these involve mashing two completely different things together to create something truly wonderful. Some of these odd combinations that totally work include peanut butter and jelly, fish and chips, and the half-man, half-robot, but all-heart law enforcement officer Robocop. Who would have thought that this mix of science fiction action would become a bona fide hit and a cult classic we are still talking about over 35 years later? Thanks to the impending release of the brand new game entitled Robocop Rogue City, I thought it would be the perfect time to reflect upon the movies, the games, and everything in between with a little bit of that good old fashioned Pat Man QC goodness sprinkled in. Why was the movie's production troubled right up until the first scenes were being shot? How did Ocean pay so little for the license for this game? What's the connection between Robocop and Judge Dredd? So grab your sidearm because I've got just one thing to say. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. This is the history of Robocop. Before diving headfirst into the video games of everyone's favorite metallic officer, we have to go back to the year 1986 when Ocean Software manager Gary Bracey has come across a script for an unusual movie by the name of Robocop. Ocean Software had been getting their feet wet with licensed IPs that were moderate hits for the company including Street Hawk, Knight Rider, and Miami Vice, but they were in desperate need of something big. Movie companies would send over scripts for potential licensing and one of these was Robocop. Based purely on reading the script alone, he had realized this had video game potential written all over it. Since this movie was a low budget affair and could turn out to be a typical B movie, they were able to secure the worldwide rights for $20,000. Since Ocean Software were not involved with either pinball machines or arcade games, they sublicensed the title to Data East. According to Mr. Bracey, Robocop was the best gamble we ever took. You see, we were taking a gamble on every license because we didn't know how successful that film was going to be. I read through the script and I thought it was awesome, and we had to do it. John Woods negotiated the license with Orion Pictures and we got it, and I'm sure it was practically for buttons, and the royalties were very low. The first draft of the script was titled Robocop The Future of Law Enforcement and was passed around studios in early 1984. The movie takes place in a violent near-apocalyptic Detroit where Officer Alex Murphy is gunned down in the line of duty. Omni Consumer Products, or OCP, uses his body to support their untested Robocop prototype. He vows to take back the streets from those nasty thugs and uphold the law. There are a lot of similarities between the comic character of Judge Dredd and Robocop. When the movie was being written, a number of comic books were used as inspiration including 2000 AD, which featured the character of Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd first appeared in 1977, and while the popular British lawman is still totally human, he has the same no-nonsense attitude that Robocop has. Actor Peter Weller portrayed the Tin Man with the gun, but when filming started, the costume itself was still not finished. This denied Weller the month of costume rehearsal he had expected. Due to his frustrations, he was actually fired from the project and another actor was considered as a replacement. The problem was, the costume was built for Weller. Depending on the various reports, the different suits weighed between 25 and 75 pounds and were molded to Mr. Weller's body. During filming, 
he would lose up to three pounds per day due to the amount of sweating he would do in the suit. After making amends with director Paul Verhoeven, Peter suggested using a pantomime to create slow rhythmic movements that would help define the character of Robocop. Robocop's armor was inspired by the Marvel comic Rom. The comic can be spotted various times throughout the movie. The movie would go on to earn $53 million at the box office and was considered a modest success. However, it proved to be huge on the home video market where it became the certified cult classic that we all know and love today. When it came time to design the home computer versions, Ocean were at a bit of a disadvantage due to the limited hardware technology as opposed to the powerful MEC-M1 board that the arcade game would use. This board played host to a number of other arcade titles such as Bad Dudes and Heavy Barrel. Ocean Software, being all the way across the pond, were also a bit further away than the U.S. division of Data East who were able to visit the set and take photographs for reference. Ocean had to make do with limited footage that they received on a VHS tape as well as a few production stills. The arcade game was released in 1988 and was a huge commercial success all over the world. Ocean decided to base their home conversions on the fantastic arcade game, but more on those various ports later. Robocop, the future of law enforcement, was released by Data East in 1988. The arcade game is a beat-em-up run-and-gun, which sees you take on the role of Robocop. The attract scenes features Robocop pulling out his gun, demonstrating not only the high graphic quality, but also the fantastic sound. Once the game starts up, a short intro is shown, recapping the events from the movie, where Officer Murphy is gunned down and is turned into the cybernetic Avenger known as Robocop. The game has a similar feel to other Data East side-scrollers such as Sly Spy and Bad Dudes. When the game first starts off, for some strange reason, you're only able to punch the bad guys. Shortly thereafter, Robocop draws his gun as he does in the movie, but you do get to use it for the rest of the game. The game takes place across seven levels of run and gun action with a little bit of platforming thrown in. The controls are fairly simple using a standard 8-way joystick and two action buttons. You have a dedicated jump button and another button for shooting and punching. As I mentioned, when you first start off, you are only able to punch enemies until you finally get to use your gun. This is your standard default form of attack unless you are close to an enemy in which you decide to pummel them with your cybernetic fists. A bit of a rare but welcome addition is the ability to shoot straight above you and not just at an angle as opposed to other run and gun games. This really comes in handy because the enemies are everywhere. The graphics are fantastic with large detail sprites and lots of color to go along with the excellent background details, some of which were ripped straight out of the movie. The music plays a nice rendition of the main Robocop theme and there are also plenty of digitized sound effects as well. The sounds of Robo pulling out his weapon Ed 209 screaming, and even voice clips from Robocop himself. Thank you for your cooperation. You have a health bar which will slowly deplete with the more hits you take. There are a few weapon upgrades you can acquire, such as double shots and three way shots. You can also find a laser rifle that can shoot through pretty much anything, although the ammunition on all of these extra weapons are limited. Your default weapon, though, does have unlimited ammunition. Also littered throughout the levels are various jars of baby food, which gives you a slight health increase. The enemies are quite a bit varied, with everyone either shooting guns, throwing bombs, using flamethrowers, chainsaws, people riding on motorcycles, or unleashing robots to take you down. 
At certain points in the game, your character becomes trapped and you have to rapidly press the buttons to get free. There are a few hostages scattered throughout the game, which after rescuing them, you get a nice thank you for your efforts. For some strange reason, you can't harm the hostage, so feel free to blast away until they are free. There are a few bits of platforming here and there, where you either have to ride either elevators or escalators. The levels you encounter are Downtown Detroit, <laughs> Old Town, the junkyard. <laughs> Narcotics factory. OCP Headquarters <laughs> Omni Security And finally, the President's Office. A couple of times during the game, you'll have your chance at a bonus round in which you have to shoot a number of targets. If you're able to successfully complete this, your life bar is increased. At the end of each stage is a mini boss with the first one being Ed 209. An armored food truck. You are under arrest. A giant mechanical claw. A giant wrecking ball. You are under arrest. You are under arrest. And finally, a couple of encounters with Ed 209 variants. The last level sees you confront the final version of Ed 209 and rescue the president of OCP. The ending plays out just like the movie for the most part. After this, the game is over. Serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. Thank you for your cooperation. Murphy. The arcade cabinet was a thing of beauty with its curved marquee and a bezel that featured numerous stills from the movie. Not only was the movie a massive success, but the game also shot to the top of the charts both in the arcades and on the various home platforms. Orion were quick to cash in on the Robocop craze with a ton of merchandise despite it being an R-rated movie. They released t-shirts, toys, lunchboxes, 
a RoboCop pinball machine, a RoboCop pachinko machine, and even a kid's cartoon was released in 1988. To make the property more kid-friendly, a number of changes were made such as replacing regular guns with laser weapons. A number of LCD handhelds were also produced over the years. Thanks to the imminent release of RoboCop 2 in theaters, RoboCop made an appearance at the World Championship Wrestling event Capital Combat 90. That's right, WCW. During the course of this event, he would rescue Sting from the brutal attack from the Four Horsemen. He would use his cybernetic strength to rip the cage door off, freeing Sting from its dastardly clutches. Speaking of, a couple of different live-action TV shows were released in the late 90s and early 2000s. Robocop also turned up in a number of commercials. Look at him, try the chicken. Oh, Robocop has made a number of cameos over the years on shows such as The Simpsons, Beavis and Butthead, Family Guy, South Park, and the movie The Indian in the Cupboard. He was also a playable character in the Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath DLC expansion pack. He also has a number of original voice lines recorded by actor Peter Weller. What model are you? I'm a cop. Terminator. I am not subject to human law. The Lin Kuei are thieves. No longer under my leadership. Its past crimes must still be punished. You know you're popular when bootleg toys are made in your likeness and Robocop was no exception. Say hello to Robert Cop. In the movie RoboCop 2, RoboCop enters an arcade that is filled with nothing but Data East arcade games. RoboCop 2 was released in theaters in 1990 and it was followed by RoboCop 2 in the arcades. This was also released by Data East and featured a lot of the same type of gameplay but also some cool new additions as well. For starters, your character can move up and down as well as left and right. You have three buttons at your disposal this time around with one button for firing left, one for firing right, and one for jumping. It also features simultaneous two-player action with both players controlling the character of Robocop. However, the second player controls the blue tinted character as he is portrayed in the second movie. Besides, who wants to play as Officer Lewis? The storyline follows the plot of the movie with your mission being to eliminate the dangerous drug dealer known as Kane and also getting the addictive drug known as Nuke off the streets. There are five stages in total with mid-level and end-level bosses. Robocop has a number of new attacks such as a body slam which is what he should have used on the four horsemen in WCW. There are bonus stages in which you mount either a motorcycle or a cop car. A number of RoboCop 2 games were released for all the major home platforms, but none of them were based on the arcade game. If you want a more detailed look at this game and all of its various versions, check out my History of Video on the title. RoboCop 3 was released for a number of home platforms in 1992 to coincide with the release of the film. This outing saw the violence cut way back and was released with the PG-13 rating. However, 
Due to the bankruptcy of Orion Pictures, the movie sat on the shelf for over a year. Peter Weller did not reprise his role as Robocop and the rest of the movie is a bit of a stinker in my opinion. There was no arcade game this time around, but the one I'm going to focus on is the Amiga version. At the time, this version was fantastic with its 3D polygons and open world setting. There are five types of gameplay included such as hand-to-hand -hand combat, a first-person shooter similar to Virtua Cop, flying a jetpack, and battling ninjas. When you purchased the game, it came with a dongle which attached to the second joystick port on your Amiga. This upped the price a bit and I can recall spending $60 back in 1992. This was an attempt to deter piracy, but apparently it didn't work as pirates had cracked and released the game onto BBSs before the game was even released in stores. The game was a lot of fun to play and although the Amiga version is a bit choppy compared to what we have nowadays, the PC version is a bit smoother. There are two different types of games including an arcade action option which allows the players to play any of the game's five sequences as a single mission or the movie adventure with more characters and different enemies. In the movie adventure mode there are cutscenes to flesh out the story. The video game and 8-bit versions featured standard shoot 'em up platform games similar to the original arcade game. In 1992, with interest still sky high after the success of Terminator 2 Judgment Day, a rather crazy crossover took place that actually seemed to work. Robocop vs. The Terminator was a four-issue comic series released by Dark Horse Comics with art by Walter Simonson and written by the author of The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller. Mr. Miller had a history with everyone's favorite metallic police officer as he had written the scripts for Robocop 2 and also Robocop 3. But whatever you do, don't hold that against him. The comic story revolves around Skynet sending three Terminators back in time to protect Robocop after they discovered his technology is partly used to build Skynet in the future. Realizing what's at stake, Robocop's consciousness enters Skynet's system and lays dormant, undetected for decades until an opportunity presents itself so he can stop the future from ever happening, saving mankind in the process. The license for these characters was obtained for almost $2 million, but there was one limitation. They couldn't use any of the plot details from the original comics, so they had to create a storyline from scratch, although honestly, it is quite similar. The design team spent late nights analyzing Contra 3 The Alien Wars to see what made the game so addictive and implemented that into the game's design. There were actually two different versions of the game, with a totally new version showing up for the Super Nintendo. My personal favorite is the Sega Genesis, which is what I'm showing here. The controls are nice and tight, and it also has better graphics and music over the Super Nintendo iteration. You take on the role of Robocop as he blasts his way through 10 levels of bloody run-and-gun action. You essentially shoot everything in sight, moving either left to right or right to left, advancing through the various levels. Thankfully, your video game character doesn't have rigor mortis, meaning you can jump, duck, slide along wires, climb ladders, and fire his big weapon. Thanks to Mortal Kombat becoming such a major success, the development team decided to up the blood and gore factor, but honestly, it seems pretty tame compared to more modern titles. There are bloodstained windows, enemies that explode into a bloody mess, and more. The Super Nintendo version isn't bad, but is nowhere near as good as the Sega Genesis version. 
Again, I have a much more detailed video on the history of this title on my channel, so I will leave a link in the description down below. Around 1997, a tech demo was created for a potential Robocop game for the original PlayStation. I have no idea of its origins, but for PlayStation technology, it looks pretty good. If you have any info on this, let me know in the comments down below. Titus Software, for the longest time, made some lackluster games for the home computer market, but they secured the license for Robocop and released a version for the Game Boy Color entitled simply Robocop. This is a top-down run-and-gun game which sees you moving around a map destroying enemies and protecting civilian units. There are eight levels you have to wander around with different mission objectives for each one. You have to collect evidence, locate certain criminals, etc. To be honest, this plays more like the very first Legend of Zelda game than a Robocop title. There are power-ups, but not quite as plentiful as in previous games. You can obtain extra life, ammo, and a new targeting system for your rocket launcher. You also have various puzzles for you to try to solve, but they aren't too difficult. The overall game is merely average in my opinion, as there is a lot of wandering around and some pretty poor hit detection. There is also a lot of backtracking, which is very unappealing. With that being said, the graphics are pretty good for the Game Boy Color, and the presentation is nicely done, especially when you interact and talk with other characters. This might be a good time to go ahead and mention the unreleased Robocop game from Titus that was set to be released in 2002 for the Game Boy Advance. This Robocop title reverts to its side-scrolling roots with 14 levels of run-and-gun action. You also have various weapons such as his infamous gun with unlimited ammo, a gun that attaches to his arm, flamethrower, missile launcher, and more. You also have power-ups and other secrets located throughout. At the end of each level are many bosses that you also have to take out. To make the game a bit more difficult, you have limited continues, but thankfully there are different levels of difficulty for all the pansies in the audience. The game is a lot of fun to play, and it's unfortunate that it never got to see a final release. UFO. In 2003, the masters at Titus Software brought us Robocop for the original Xbox and PlayStation 2. The story features a new plot revolving around a new designer drug called Brain Drain, which is controlled by crime lord William Nex. It's up to you to take control of Robocop and blast through nine different missions. This is a first-person shooter which sees your character blast through the various baddies and bosses. Let's just get this out of the way, but this game is unbelievably difficult. It seems as if every bad guy you will encounter from the start of the game to the end has an insane amount of ammunition and they are very difficult to kill. 
For example, if I was shot in the head in real life, I would probably go down after three or four shots. The bad guys in this game take around 10 headshots each to take them out. It's possible that Robocop is using Tic Tacs as bullets, but whatever the case, it doesn't work. Thanks to Robocop being a slow, lumbering 500 pound cyborg, running away isn't really an option. You can find things to hide behind, but they are few and far between. Apparently, the game was in development for over two years, but it's still filled with a lot of bugs, including horrendous collision detection, which allows enemies to pull up Barry Allen and walk through walls. There are a lot of different weapons to use, but you need the biggest and baddest to make a dent, which usually involves a missile launcher or a grenade launcher. One saving grace in this is the ability to save your game, but for whatever reason, you can't save your progress in between missions. The missions themselves are also extremely long, which also ups the difficulty and the frustration level. The targeting system works okay, but everything else moves at a snail's pace. The graphics are adequate, but they aren't anything to get excited about. The voice clips are ridiculous, with the original actor Peter Weller refusing to return. Whoever did the Robocop impression sounds like he did a few too many mushrooms before recording his lines. Not to mention, they gave Robo a number of horrible lines such as, Oh yeah, which doesn't sound anywhere near as cool as when the Kool-Aid guy did it. Oh yeah, ammunition. Hey Kool-Aid! Oh yeah, Kool-Aid here, bringing you fun. If you are a Robocop completionist and have to try every single Robocop game, then go ahead and check this game out, but don't say I didn't warn you. By the way, this is the lowest rated Robocop game ever with scores around 3 out of 10. I don't think it's that bad, but it's not that great either. Energy. Robocop made his debut on mobile phones everywhere in 2004. This is a Java game and was brought to us by Digital Bridges. In this game, Robo attempts to stop Clarence Boddicker and his gang of thugs. This is a sort of reimagining of the original arcade game, although expanded. For an early Java game, this didn't turn out too bad. There are a number of levels and upgraded weapons for you to use. You also have to rescue various hostages. You also have to contend with Ed 209 as well as finally taking down the dastardly Dick Jones in the finale. The graphics are nice and colorful and are animated fairly well. To coincide with one of the most unnecessary remakes ever, 2014 saw the release of Robocop as a free-to-play shooter developed for iOS and Android. This is a tie-in to the much maligned 2014 remake of Robocop, although it does have a different plot. The game is played as a third-person shooter, but you can use various weapons throughout the different missions. Thankfully, you can also hide behind objects so you are not blasted to bits. The graphics are very nice and the animation is smooth. Since this is a free-to-play game, microtransactions are running wild with some of the best weapons being extremely expensive. Apparently, some of these would cost you over $100. It was a fun little game to play if you could get past the actual money you would have to spend to upgrade Robo. The graphics are good, the sounds are excellent, and the controls work really well, especially for a handheld device. It's just too bad that this was released centered around the microtransactions. After years of waiting, we finally got our grubby little hands on a brand new Robocop game. Robocop Rogue City was just released last week. 
This is a first person shooter that was released for PlayStation 5, Windows, and Xbox. The storyline takes place between Robocop 2 and Robocop 3 and sees you take control of Robo as he scours the city of old Detroit looking for criminals who are not staying out of trouble. You have to conduct investigations and even give out parking tickets. Since this game is set between Robocop 2 and 3, your partner Officer Lewis also accompanies you on your missions. There are a number of side quests throughout the game and you can choose to solve them either peacefully or violently. The storyline and ending are altered depending on what decisions you make as Robocop. Your primary weapon is your standard Auto 9 gun which has unlimited ammunition but you can also pick up extra weapons that the enemies drop. You can even pick up exploding barrels and television sets to throw them back at the enemy. It's also possible to use enemies as human shields against gunfire. Your character has several new abilities such as night vision and a flashbang shockwave. Bullet time can also be induced which sees time slow down briefly to allow you to kill enemies much easier. There are a number of cutscenes throughout the game and one big addition is Peter Weller returning to voice lines for the character. Nancy Allen also returns to reprise her character of Officer Lewis. The storyline is fairly lengthy, but to be honest, I haven't had a chance to dive too deep into it just yet. I have heard rumblings though that it's over 10 hours long. It's an excellent modern game that gives Robocop fans exactly what they want. When it comes to the home conversions of Robocop, we had some versions that turned out pretty good and others that would leave a taste in your mouth as bad as baby food. In a shrewd bit of advertising, when the original Robocop debuted on VHS tapes everywhere, Ocean Software had put an ad in each videotape that showed a short commercial for the upcoming home release. This helped generate positive buzz, turning the home versions into one of the first million-selling video games. Ocean Software presents Robocop, part man, part machine, all computer game. You've seen the Smash movie, played the all-action coin-op, now experience the thrills on your home computer. As Robocop, you blast through the many levels of the underworld in the pursuit of justice. Scrolling shoot-em-up action. You've got to be tough, ruthless, and lethal. You've got to be Robocop. The 8-bit micro versions came out alongside the VHS release in the fall of 1988. If you can get past the black and white monochrome graphics, the Spectrum version turned out rather well. Although it's similar to the arcade game, it's not quite exact as there are some differences such as no foes throwing bombs, Robo having his pistol from the start of the game, and very few end of level bosses. Your character also doesn't jump and he also has an annoying pause whenever he is hit. There are some new minigames such as a photo puzzle in which you have to make an exact copy from facial features found in the criminal database. There are also some third person perspective sections where you have to shoot the bad guy holding a hostage. The playability is very good and the animation is fairly smooth. If you have the 128K version, you are greeted with excellent in-game music and even some digitized voices from the movie. The Amstrad version is very similar to the 128K Spectrum version but with a whole lot of color. The speed of the game is very fast and controls really well although the stairways can be a bit tricky. It features the same minigames as well as some pretty nice sampled speech. This game only allows you three lives with no continues so it is a bit tough.
Released the following year was the Amiga version. First off, for some strange reason they didn't use Peter Weller's voice from the movie and had it sound alike, which sounds like it was recorded in somebody's bathroom. Apparently, Robo summered on the mean streets of London because he now has a British accent. Serve the public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. There is also a border around the screen which makes the playfield smaller. Since this was designed for only a single button joystick, you have to press the spacebar to jump or press down then up on the stick. This version does follow the arcade game's design more so than the 8-bit. The graphics are really well done with plenty of color and some good animation, especially on Robo himself. There are cutscenes showing news reports that use the actors from the movie. The sound effects are good with digitized samples such as Robocop's gun and the cries of Ed 209, but the music is only so-so. While it does make a decent attempt at the Robocop theme, the Amiga is capable of so much more. It's still fun to play and I have fond memories of doing so on my Amiga back in the day. The Atari ST version turned out pretty similar to the Amiga port, although the music and sound effects have taken a hit. It seems to run a bit slower than the Amiga port, but it also has the same controls. There are fewer voice samples in the game as well. Otherwise, it's not too bad. The Apple II version is a rather unappealing mess. It does get points for following the arcade game's layout, but that's about it. If you like graphics that are chunky like a monkey, then this is the game for you. Everything is large and bloated, but at least there is plenty of color. However, the screen doesn't scroll and it features choppy animation. It's also a bit slower than the arcade game, but it does control well enough. There is no music and the sound effects are tiny little popcorn farts which thankfully are not SPD. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next and looks pretty nice. The game uses smooth scrolling and some nicely detailed sprites thanks to the high res overlay technique that was used. The fantastic music was composed by John Dunn, but it features all new tunes with Robocop's iconic theme nowhere to be found. The game controls fairly well, but for some reason Robocop slides around as if you were performing in the ice capades. For some strange reason, you can't fire up without jumping. That makes the game even more difficult than it already is. The game was clearly rushed by Ocean Software, so it contains a number of bugs. For example, one of the levels turned out to be a graphical mess due to a glitch making it almost unplayable. Supposedly, the developers knew of this, but they didn't want to delay the release of the game. Instead of correcting it, they lowered the timer on the previous level, making it impossible to complete so you could never make it to the buggy fourth level. That is some pretty shady tactics, my friend. However, people in the Commodore 64 scene have released a corrected version allowing you to play through the game as it was initially conceived. It also has a bunch of trainers allowing unlimited guys and unlimited energy, for example. The 
there were two different RoboCop games produced for MS-DOS. The European version is purely CGA which means the game is rendered in pink, cyan, black and white. It also features something we all love so much, an extremely large border around the screen. This game is a pastel colored nightmare that goes perfectly with its herky-jerky animation and scrolling. This version is based on the 8-bit micros but doesn't play anywhere near as well. There is no music and short little beeps for sound effects. The other version that was released a couple of years later in America by Data East and was done in 16 color EGA mode. This version follows the arcade very closely. It features the arcade attract and opening scenes but they were all completely redrawn. The game supports a two button joystick so at least it attempts to mimic the arcade's controls. While the colors are brighter than the arcade version, the level layouts are pretty much the same. With that being said, the animation on Robo was pretty good although the scrolling is way too choppy. It does feature the same end of level bosses but the sound effects and music are pure PC beeper. The sound effects can be a bit grating on the eardrum so you just might want to turn them off. Overall though, it's a much better effort than what the poor Europeans had to suffer through just a couple of years before. The MSX version is just a port of the excellent Spectrum version. However, there is no speech but the excellent music does remain. The game does run a little bit slower than the Spectrum but it controls about the same. A version was released for the TRS-80 Coco by Data East and looks to be based on the NES version. This game was one of two super cartridges designed for the Coco with a built-in memory manager unit. The other one was Predator. In this version, Robocop has been inflicted with an even more significant case of rigor mortis as he only has two frames of walking animation. Speaking of rigor mortis, the music isn't bad, although it does sound like something you would find playing at a funeral parlor. Another highlight of this version are the topless crackheads who are very proficient at flying kicks. Speaking of the NES version, this was developed in Japan by Data East and even though it's a side-scrolling run and gun, Robocop cannot actually jump. Looking at the sprite of Robocop, apparently he skipped leg day because his legs look smaller than his arms. He has also lost a few pounds and is looking quite gaunt but what would you expect from eating just baby food? The game deviates quite a bit from the arcade game creating a whole new adventure in the process. The level designs are all new but still reminiscent of the original arcade game. The gameplay is fast and furious and the music is nice with Robo's iconic theme represented well. There are plenty of animated cutscenes in between to help flesh out the story. Your character still has the familiar power-ups such as baby food for more energy and more powerful weapons to dish out the extreme punishment. You even have a boss fight at the end with a giant ED-209. The game is a lot of fun to play and features tight controls. Thankfully, it's not very difficult either. 
The Game Boy version, which of all the 8-bit versions is clearly the winner in my opinion. For starters, we have spectacular music that is still dancing around in my head as I write this. I have to say though, I still miss the Robocop theme. The graphics are well done with Robocop being easily depicted even on the small Game Boy screen. The shading on the levels and characters make everything stand out so they don't get lost in the background. The arcade's first person view mini levels are also present. You also have various upgrades to your weapons as well as boss fights with classic enemies such as Ed 209. The Game Boy music was also notable for being used in the Ariston and on and on ad in the early 1990s. And on. And on. And on. A freeware version from Park Productions was released for Windows back in 2004. This is essentially an updated version of the 8-bit computer ports, but only with upgraded graphics and sounds. An excellent homebrew version of the original arcade game is also on the way to the Sega Genesis. A homebrew AGA version for the Amiga is also being worked on and looks fantastic. The Amiga scene has been on a roll as of late with some excellent homebrew such as Rygar and Wonderboy, so here's hoping Robocop turns out just as well. Not only is Robocop a classic video game, but also a stellar movie that I still enjoy to this day. Officer Alex Murphy giving us all to become the Tin Man with a badge is a great concept, and if you haven't seen the original movie and love sci-fi, you should check it out. Just stay away from the awful 2014 remake, even though Michael Keaton is in it. The coin-op was one of my favorite arcade running guns, so if you've never had a chance to get down to old Detroit and take down the dangerous Clarence Boddicker, be sure and bring a rocket launcher with you. Remember, stay out of trouble. You'll be glad you did. Just a reminder, if you want an even more detailed look at the history of Robocop 2 and Robocop vs. the Terminator, check out my links down below. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.